Hello there, and it feels like ages since I've said those words for an intro. I sort of phased it out in order to get straight into the video because it just breaks up the intro, but I think it's definitely needed for this. This is going to be another Q&A, sort of a part two to the first Ask Moldy episode, mainly for your comments to be answered and sometimes you to get to know a little bit more about myself, which is the case with the first question from Frogstomp27. First off, if I do get any of your names wrong in this video, feel free to point them out down in the comments, especially if you're going to leave another comment just so I can get it right next time. The last thing I want to do is get all of your names wrong. So Frogstomp27 asks, what was my intention with getting a math degree? What job did I want to get? And that video where I created a mini figure scout with my math degree absolutely blew up. So first off, thank you all to everyone who watched that video. And my intention with my maths degree initially was to go into banking. But early on, I got quite a bit of experience with going into the banking field and it just wasn't for me. So actually, once I got my degree, I tried a few different things, including motion capture and the techie side of it, the different coding aspects. And honestly, I still have no idea what I want to put my degree towards. But I think Lego is a very fun area to use it. And it is honestly so helpful when going down to the specifics of my minifigure scout. Of course, you don't need a degree to build Lego. And definitely check out my part two to that video where I break down the actual steps to get in my minifigure scout accurate across all of my models. But it definitely helps a bit having a background in math. The next question is from James, who actually left the question on my last Ask Moldy and has been waiting so long for an answer. The question is, how do you decide what sets to display with minifigures and what minifigures to display separately? Now, it tends to be a case of me not having enough space to display the minifigures on my minifig display, if I'm honest, which is why I've created this brand new clone trooper display, which we will get to in a minute. I'm pretty sure there's a question on it. If not, I'll talk about it at the end. But I tend to display minifigures with sets that either came with the sets or are popular enough to have a few different minifigures. Looking up here, I can see the Boba Trooper Vader mech, which I've got plenty of them minifigures. Yoda's Starfighter, I've also got a few Yodas, so I've whacked them up there. Attack of the Clones Kenobi in his Delta is because I've custom made another Kenobi up there. So it tends to be minifigures that I have multiples of. Again, we've got the 501st with any of the clone ships, even with the 332nd battle pack and the alternate build that I've built with that. I've got two of them built at the minute and both of them have 501st troopers because I wanted to fit all my 332nd troopers in this display as different sort of specialized clones. So to answer the question, it tends to be minifigures that I have a load of. Any minifigures like the recent Padme from the gunship would go on my minifigure display as that is a completely new costume. But any clone troopers or Luke X-Wing pilots, Darth Vader's, the only exception to that rule perhaps has to be all of my phase one clone troopers. Now, every single one of my phase one clone troopers that I own is in my ATTE. And that is because as a child watching Clone Wars, seeing all the ATTE Clone Wars sets come out, that is my one set that I have wanted since I started collecting Lego Star Wars, since I started playing with Lego Star Wars, I'm not quite sure I can call myself a collector, but I do have near enough all of the new Phase 2 clones. So when I got that set, I did pack all of my Phase 1s in there. For the rest of the minifigures, they're just duplicates or similar enough to other minifigures that are displayed in the Star Wars display. So thank you very much for your question and I hope I was able to answer it. Octavius the Dark Elf, which is a awesome name by the way, asked if the free minifigure on your birthday is global. Now, when I got into contact with Lego about this, they weren't quite sure there was an actual service in place. So this will go store by store. It seems to not be the case in Australia, but the stores over there do have different rules, which you might have seen with a few different make and takes recently and some big Lego YouTubers. But the best thing to do is ask your local store or wherever you're traveling on the day ahead of time. You can either call them or you can send in an email. I'm not quite sure how you'd access the email, but I'm sure there's some way you can find out or even whilst you're there, ask in store and they'll probably have something special to give away because I've seen cases where people have asked and they've not been able to give away free Lego 
but have instead given away certain discounts on the Lego products. So it's always worth to ask if you're near a Lego store on your birthday. Tom Muller also has a similar question about the promos. Is it possible to get the Star Wars promo? This was for May 4th, though it does apply for most of these other promos through the online pick a brick. Now, right now, whilst I'm recording this video, there is an alien diner gift we purchased, and there was also two poly bags, which I'm not quite sure are still active. But if you scroll down on the Lego site, you'll see a little asterisk which tells you which sets they are and aren't available for. Now, most of the time they'll specify if it's a Star Wars line exclusive or some of the poly bags tends to be just for the city and friend sets. Now, a lot of gift with purchases do actually work for the pick a brick service, but it's always worth going to check before you make your order as any of them that are tied to any specific themes tend to not work on the pad. So the May 4th one specifically, because they're exclusive to the Lego Star Wars sets, don't work with pick a brick even if you're getting some lego star wars bricks as the actual bricks exclusive to lego star wars themselves are also not available on the pick a brick service which hopefully they can change at some point but it just be very expensive for them to get the license to sell bricks that really should be making you pick up the lego set so there are definitely pros and cons to it but for the most part if it's tied to a theme pick a brick won't work now here's the question i was talking about earlier from Hood Dow or Hud Dow, where did you get the hexagonal displays in the back? These displays here weren't purchased. I'm not sure you can purchase them. I'm sure someone sells a similar design to this, but they were actually 3D printed in my other room and they do look so cool. They've got a three by four CMF plate in the bottom of each of them, just so I'm not hurting any of the Lego minifigures and I wouldn't recommend 3D printing your own Lego bricks unless you're going to use a Lego brick between them and minifigures. They are all modular and I can just keep adding to this. You can see I've now got the Bad Batch on top, so I'm going to have to build another column down the right hand side and can just keep building this for as long as I've got space. So that's why I opted with this rather than buying a third party one. And each of these only costs probably a pound to make. It takes me about two to three hours just to print one of these at precise enough settings so that they can lock into each other and fit the Lego plate cleanly at the bottom. But I do think they look really, really cool. Lego Man 12312 was wondering if it's worth picking up the Republic Coruscant Guard gunship. And I think 100% it is. If you're a fan of Clone Wars and you're not fussed about the colours. A few people have moaned about the colours, but not every set is going to be for everyone. If you are a fan of the Clone Wars and want another style of gunship in your collection, it is an amazing set. Not to mention the minifigures, Palps, Fox, Padme, all three new minifigures, and you get a few extra Coruscant Guards. It's a great way as well to display your Coruscant Guard and your shiny Phase 2 Troopers from the Battle Pack if you have got yourself quite a few different battle packs. Again, I'll lead you to my recent video where I made modifications on it because you can actually fit the battle pack speeder in the back as well, which I think is an awesome function and the command post in the front as well as, of course, I had to make a few changes like adding the double doors. So if you did want the gunship, it's not impossible to give it double doors. They are a bit fragile, but the set itself is more than good enough for the price it costs. So Personally, if you could pick it up on a sale, I don't think I could recommend it enough. But even at the Lego retail price, without any gift with purchases, it's a pretty solid set. Though I'd always say if you can, wait for a sale, wait for a gift with purchase, and you're just making your money back. The next question comes from QCOBON. I'm going to say Cubone because that is the Pokemon in the thumbnail. And they ask, what about the actual recent TIE Interceptor? Is it mini figure scale? The one that came with the Fang Fighter. Because it didn't look to be the exact size as the model I showed off. The model itself isn't too far off mini figure scale. I found that each of the wings were six plates too long and two plates too wide or tall. The parts of the wings that fold over and under the rest of the model. So the cockpit lines up, the wingspan itself also lines up. And if you want to make those modifications to make your ship minifigure scale, it doesn't look too hard to do. They've definitely oversized it. Like the Fang Fighter that is massive compared to minifigure scale. It's probably like two, three times the actual size that it should be. But the TIE Interceptor actually looks like a pretty good model. So if you weren't fussed with the specifics, I'd say just leave it as and 
it will definitely pass for minifigure scale. Now, the next question isn't exactly a question, but I would like to point it out. Someone pointed out that on the new June roller coaster, I'm sure I'll touch on this again, it looks like LEGO have recreated an Exo Force mech, and I think this is 100% intentional. They've been sneaking in older designs and little references to older themes and older sets in so many sets recently, especially for some of the bigger collector sets. So I think 100% it's an Exo Force model. I will put an image up so you know exactly what I'm talking about, but I'm sure we can all see the resemblance. Now, I'm sure this is the question you've all been waiting for from Aiden6154. Can I make a Chimera Star Destroyer? Now, I'll get onto the 43 meter model in just a second, but 100%, if I can pick up the new Star Destroyer coming out in July, I would love to make it into a Chimera. The only problem with that model is I'm not exactly keen on any of the minifigures, and for that price, there's got to be at least one minifigure that I want. I've made my own custom Cal Kestis, so while it would be cool to get the official one, there's not much of a difference to my custom one, and there's no minifigures that pull me into the set. The Stormtroopers, the Officers, and the other Imperial I already have in my collection. Darth Vader, again, it's a minifigure I have so much of. I've got him in the mech, I've got him in his own ship up there, I've got him on display here, and he's even on one of the diorama displays behind me. So, I don't need any of the minifigures. If I can find this set on sale, much like the Maul Skimitar, I'll definitely be picking it up, but... Until then, you might have to wait a bit, but you can guarantee that when I do pick that set up, I'll be adding Thrawn's Chimera to the bottom and packing it full of different minifigures we saw in Ahsoka, building one more Ahsoka mock. Now, onto the bigger Star Destroyer that a load of you have asked me to make. Now, I have added a requirement. We will have to hit 100k to build a minifigure scale Star Destroyer because it is massive. The typical Star Destroyer you see on screen when you're watching Star Wars scales to minifigure scale. This isn't the length of the Star Destroyer. This is a minifigure scale Lego model, 43 meters. I don't know you, but over in the UK, space is very expensive. I do not have 43 meters anywhere near. Even the local park isn't 43 meters long for me to build this model. So I've put it back to 100K subs because I'm going to need the money to rent out a warehouse just to display this set. Now, I will be building it in a modular fashion. I'm not just going to build the exterior and that will be all. Because I would like to have quite a bit of interior. So, I'll probably chunk it out into some really big dioramas. And then stack them up to build the interior frame. And so much work's going to go into it. I'll probably build one of the smaller versions of the Star Destroyer. And I've got a few to choose from. We've got the Virgil class Star Destroyer, which is the smallest. Personally, it's not really a Star Destroyer, and I think it's based off a of fan design anyway. We then have the Victory class Star Destroyer, which is the smallest recognizable Star Destroyer in the terms of it looks exactly like a Star Destroyer and is a little shorter than the other one. But the one I think I'll probably be going for is the Gladiator class Star Destroyer. So. Let me know if you're excited to see a minifigure scale Star Destroyer down in the comments. It's going to be the biggest model, even if I go with the Gladiator class Star Destroyer. We're looking at a record-breaking Star Wars model. Just to give you some expectations on how big this is going to be, the life-size LEGO X-Wing that they built in 2013 for the release of the new LEGO set was only 13.1 meters long. And currently, as far as the internet knows, that is the biggest LEGO Star Wars ship that has been built using official LEGO bricks. That's 43 feet wide, and what we are looking at building will be an extra foot on top of that. 13.4 meters. It's a 600 meter Star Destroyer in real life. You divide that by 45, which is the scale I use for the ships. 13 and a half meters is really long, 44 feet. The biggest recent model I've seen LEGO fans make is Aaron and Martin's light cruiser, Moff Gideon's light cruiser from The Mandalorian, and that was seven meters or 23 feet. So we're looking double the length of that. And just to show you how big that was, this is it in a haul. So I'm definitely going to need to rent out a massive space for this, which is why I put it back to 100k. If you would like to see that soon, definitely hit the subscribe button because I'm going to need a lot of support and a lot more Lego bricks. But back to the question, I will be making the Chimera with the playset and then a 
massive model somewhere down the lines and i've said it now in a few videos you can hold me to it if you'd like i've also added it to my bio so that everyone knows the end game for this channel no matter what happens if we hit 100k subs when we hit 100k subs i plan to make the biggest lego star wars spaceship anyone has made at least unless someone beats me to it and builds it first now aaron has an interesting question here he asks if minifigure scale is a waste of time because of the different proportion, proportions of a minifigure. Now, it really depends how you are building because a lot of people will take minifigure scale for smaller sets to be the width of a minifigure and for bigger sets to slowly reduce it. Minifigure scale is honestly just whatever you want to make it. Personally, I quite enjoy the uniqueness of the Lego minifigure and using Lego bricks, if I can get as accurate to the model as I can, I don't really mind that minifigures look a little off. You're never going to get them the exact proportions as the ships unless you're using model characters. But at one point, if I've got enough space to display all of my minifigures separate, I probably won't even have them in their ships. As I said earlier, I've only got duplicate minifigures in their ships at the minute. So I'm not too fast on displaying Lego minifigures with ships. A bit similar to the UCS line where the ships don't scale properly to the minifigures. So they've got them all on a display plaque out in front. If I had the room to do that, I probably would just lay them out in front of the ships because I think the minifigures have their own purpose for display. And I just really like the way they look. As you can see, I've got Star Wars ones down there. I've got Marvel and other themes here and the CMFs. I'm a big fan of the CMFs because I just like the way that minifigures look and they are models in themselves. So I'm really not fussed if they don't look great with any of the shit. So to answer your question, I don't think minifigure scale is a waste of time. Nothing's really a waste of time when it comes to Lego. As long as you're having fun, as long as you're enjoying it, and more importantly, as long as you like the way that your display looks, I think that's an amazing use of your time. I also got a question, did I get a lot on May the 4th? Now, I have already done a video on my haul and it basically consisted of a load of freebies and giveaways because I'm not one for spending money on May the 4th. I wasn't last year, I'm not this year, and hopefully I'm not gonna be next year. The only reason I would be spending money on May the 4th is for them promos. I managed to build the droid carrier anyway because there were no exclusive parts in that set. So there was no reason for me to spend over 150 pound just to pick it up, build it and break it down at some point. That's not to say you shouldn't, but I definitely think if you're not interested in the May 4th promos, I've seen so many people pick it up to sell it later on. When there's no exclusive pieces in the set, that's very hard to do nowadays because so many LEGO fans are used to going on BrickLink, buying these parts. You can buy a few old battle droids for nowhere near what that set's going to now cost you. So I'm not keen on picking up anything May 4th because I know Black Friday, Christmas sales, New Year sales, around the rest of the year away from the May holiday, there's likely to be better Star Wars deals. The only reason May is so big for Star Wars is because of May 4th. And many stores just try to capitalize on that and make their sales look as pleasing as possible when, in fact, they're not always great. Now, this isn't always the case. Argos had 20% off of the new Tantive. I haven't seen anyone else have money off on that set before May 4th. This was a week early they started their sales and that was a great deal. But again, if you're not looking to buy a set like the Tantive and get the free keyring with it, it's money you don't need to be spending. So... I don't buy anything on May 4th because I don't want to get caught up in the sales and start spending lots of money, but that is completely down to you if you choose to do the same. I didn't realize we had so many questions. Thank you all for leaving your comments down below in the comments because I really enjoy giving my thoughts on these and especially some of the more behind the scenes questions. If I can give tips like saving your money, it will help some of you as well. So the next question comes from something something 245, which is a hilarious name. Would a minifigure scale Zeta class cargo shuttle be too big? Now, I think in terms of my minifigure scale, 1 to 45 scale, as I've covered in many videos now, Rick Vault did a model like this. I'm not quite sure how close to 145 they were staying. And it didn't have an interior at all, but nothing's really too big as long as you've got the imagination, the creativity and the patience big lego models take a lot more time not only to build but you've also got a plan and make sure things line up and that's why i've given myself so much time on the naboo bongo here i gave myself a whole month to build it i probably could have got it done in two weeks if i was rushing and 
dedicated two weeks to the project, but you definitely need to have at least a week to check over everything before you start building it. So it's not too big, but it might be a bit harder than you'd like it to be. I'd always recommend when building larger models, perhaps you can size them down a little bit more than your smaller models and blow them up a little bigger because as long as one ship is bigger than the other as it's meant to be in Star Wars, I don't really think it matters if they're one to one scale. That's just something personally, because of my background in maths perhaps, I like to see and visualize how big each ship is compared to each other, which is why now I've dug myself a massive hole in building a potentially 43 meter Lego ship. Lord Egg asked me if the UCS Razorcrest was minifigure scale. Technically, almost kind of, because the length and the height match a 135 scale, which is, again, another popular minifigure scale that I know loads of you in the comments are using. But the width is a 132 scale. So the wings are a little too big, and that is completely down to the stability of the LEGO model. If they made them any smaller, there is a chance that the wings would fall off a lot easier. And I know a few people have already had problems with some of the parts falling off UCS models. But if you could reduce the wings by about 10%, 9%, then it would be exactly 1 to 35 scale. But they're about 10% too big. So if you could reduce them by 9% of the bricks, I guess it would be exactly 1 to 35 minifigure scale. Now, the final question, we're finishing up on a high here. What is the most accurate scale to minifigure scale? And they gave a few examples, 145, 135, 130. I think I also talk about 120. The most accurate depends on which measurement you're taking. I base mine on the height of a minifigure because we have an average height as humans. We don't tend to have an average depth or an average width that I am aware of, at least not globally. I'm sure that definitely depends on the country you're from. So I would go with 145, which is based on the height of a minifigure. I believe 135 is roughly based on the width of a minifigure. And the only problem with 135 is it makes all the minifigures look like dwarfs because of their heights aren't quite what they'd be in universe. And 130 is just a little bit bigger than that. And then 120 is about where the speed champions line is at. So the most accurate based on their height is 145, based on their width is 135, and the others are just better play scales for Lego, like with their speed champions line. So that has been all the questions I've got since my last video. Of course, you don't have to leave your questions just on this video. Feel free to ask me any questions on any videos and I'll put it away for another video like this. Thank you all for commenting. Not only does it help out the channel, but it also helps me to connect with you, the audience. And thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to drop a like if you did enjoy this video and any of the answers did help you out and subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. And so you don't miss the next one. May the bricks be with you always.